they've sent physical therapy over the next week and she says to me had me to do something she said you're gonna have to strengthen your core and I said okay I get it I understand I accept that that I'm weak and I need to strengthen my core but then the Holy Ghost shook me the Holy Ghost shook me and said it's not just for you it's for the body of Christ that we're going to have to strengthen our core. Now, if he gives you a job to do, it's only because he wants to keep you close. Amen. He wants your core to be close. The core of the church starts with the foundation. He said, I lay in Zion a foundation. You can't even talk about the core of the church without talking about the foundation. The core is the most central part of our existence, church. The core is the most innermost, the most essential part of you. The core, the core of the church is where the Spirit of God live, is. The church cannot exist without the core. The core is our foundation. That's why the psalmist says, for if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Church, there's so much going on in, and in this world and so much of political upheaval and we, talk, we blame it on everybody else except, like my cousin used to say, the main thing is the main thing and that's the church. Amen. If political, we can't blame it on the millennials. You know, y'all call them that self-centered generation. We can't blame them on the baby boomers. You know, those are post-war babies. We can't blame it on Generation Z, those digital age babies. And you better beware what's going to happen in the future with the AI generation. Amen. Church, our question is to you, are we yet positioned? Hallelujah. Are we yet in the position of defending the gates? We talk about criminality and murder and killings. It seems like without a conscience. But are we in our position? Are we yet watchmen on the wall? Help me this morning, Holy Ghost. Are we yet armed and dangerous and equipped to man the foundation? Hallelujah. It seems the world is looking for border control. It seems like the church we need border control church strengthen your core the Lord gave me this message uh, in 2000 was the subject of this message in 2019 I got ill very very ill I woke up one morning with a little abdominal pain uh, nothing to write home about so I went on to work and about 10 o'clock that morning the pain worsened I was on my last patient and I went to tell uh, one of the nurses, I said, I'm in a whole lot of pain. I need to go to the emergency room. I don't know what it is. But here's what I need you to do discreetly, is to get my patient, when I'm done, off the table and escort them where they need to go. I will do the data processing on my patient, and I'll set up the doctor's information. Okay, I said discreetly. So, the brother got so alarmed. He called my director. He called, he told everybody in the department, something is wrong with Kathy. My director called me alarmed and she said, Kathy, are you all right? I go, no, I'm not. And I said, but I'm going to the emergency room just a minute. So one of my sweet co-workers came back. She said, Kathy, I'm going to get a wheelchair and I'll escort you around. And she went that way, I went that way. Out the door, clocked out, went to the back door of the emergency room. Told them who I was, give them a little history and, and they sent me straight on to the back. And then after they triaged me, they said, come on, we stay right here, we're going to find your bed. We got to the back and make a long story short, got me a stretcher in the back and the doctor came in and he said to me, 
and got a little history and all that. He said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to order EKG. I'm going to order Texas Ray. I'm going to order some blood work. And this, and I raised my hand and I said, sir, would you order a stat CAT scan enhanced with your orders? And I said to him, he said, yes. And I said, but I'm allergic to the dye, so you need to pre-medicate me. And so they did, he said, he agreed to all of that. I, did, I went to CAT scan, had it, the images done, and before I could get back to the emergency room, they said, we got a problem. And they called the doctor, told him what was going on. The doctor called a surgeon for stat surgery. What had happened, I had a major intestinal blockage that was ballooning in my stomach. That's a pain I've never had before and the most severe pain I've had in my life, and I've had some pain. And the, it was beginning to balloon. And the surgeon, when I got to the emergency room, the surgeon came in and said, we're going to have to do surgery. And I heard her out, and I raised my hand. I said, no surgery. I didn't know what God had in mind, but I don't believe surgery was one of them. And she said, well, I'll be back. So she circled the ER, and my husband, brother Mike, circling the ER, and thank God for that wonderful introduction this morning. Woo-hoo! I love it, baby. The surgeon came. She said, I'm circling. They start circling. The doctor came in. I end up going to the floor. I, on the stretcher, I could not get comfortable. I was miserable. I found myself in the room about 9 o'clock that night on my hands and on my knees in the bed, if you can imagine. Could not lay down in pain. And I yelled out. I cried out to God. Pastor Renata talked about in Bible study this week. Open your mouth. I cried out to God. And I said to God, I didn't need to know why. I said to God, what is this for? And immediately, my phone trilled over there on the table. Somebody was sending a message or a text message or something, it trilled. I couldn't get to it then, and, and when I got to it, I found out it was a prayer. Okay, then the next thing, okay, I want you to follow this, one thing cry out to God. Second thing, I, when I looked at the message, it was a prayer my little sweet cousin Taylor sent. No, hi, cat, cat, how you doing, and all that going through. It was just prayer, just prayer. Because the Holy Ghost knows what you need in the time you need it. And then next thing, there was a knock on the door, and it was the surgeon again. And she knew I didn't want surgery. I said it all day. And she said to me, I got another idea. Look at God. You cry out to him, folks praying, and then the surgeon comes up with another idea. And she said, how about if we do this mechanically? And I said, that would work. And she said, we're going to put an NG tube. You can't eat. You can't drink. You can't do no ice, nothing. You can't. And eight days later, 20 pounds lighter, God released. Woo! He released the blockage without surgery. God is a wonder all by himself. I went on back home, went on back home to my husband, and we had to go for a checkup. When for a checkup, the doctor says to me, this is what the Lord reveals to me, revealed to me back then that has been resonating with me. I went to the doctor, and he said to me, Kathy, you're going to have to strengthen your core. 20 pounds later, didn't want to eat, didn't have no desire to eat. You're going to have to strengthen your core. They've sent physical therapy over the next week, and she says to me, had me to do some things. She said, you're going to have to strengthen your core. And I said, okay, I get it. I understand. I accept that, that I'm weak, and I need to strengthen my core. But then the Holy Ghost shook me. The Holy Ghost shook me and said, it's not just for you. It's for the body of Christ. 
that we're going to have to strengthen 